Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to wrestle with a whopper of a story problem. Um, we are in our home links, uh, unit 4, lesson 5, using multiplication. And that is an understatement. We are going to use a lot of multiplication in this problem here. So let's get started. Ms. Patel wants to keep her classroom calculators in a box that is 25 centimeters long, 15 centimeters wide, and 5 centimeters tall. The calculators measure 12 centimeters long, 7 centimeters wide, and 1 centimeter tall. How many calculators can Mrs. Patel fit in the box? All right. So we've got a box, and we've got some calculators, and we want to fill the box. So let's look at this box again. It is 15 centimeters wide by 25 centimeters long, deep, long, five centimeters high. So those are our dimensions right there. Now when you compare that to the calculator, it's seven centimeters wide, 12 centimeters deep, one centimeter tall. So that's gonna be important to uh, keep in mind here, okay? So if you open up a box, or you look in the box, let's say, let's say this box has a lid and the lid's been taken off, okay? So let's imagine for a moment the inside of this box. Now, if you've ever uh, drawn a three-dimensional prism, you'll know that uh, there are edges and there are sides and there are vertices that make up a box like this. Now what I've drawn here in red is to help you visualize the inside of the box. Okay? Now let's take for a moment the bottom of this box here. Okay? The surface area of that bottom of the box, right? Uh, can hold so many calculators, and then we're going to stack layers of calculators on top of them, okay? So let's make a red rectangle to represent the bottom of our box, okay? It's still going to be 15 centimeters across by 25 centimeters high or wide, okay? So the question then becomes, how many of these calculators could I fit in uh, the bottom of that box? Okay. Well, if a calculator is 7 centimeters wide, that's roughly halfway uh, or half of the distance across this box. Okay. So 7 centimeters would be about like that. right? So that means I could fit two calculators side by side, right? And the calculators are 12 inches long, which is, again, roughly half the distance of the length of this box, about right here, right? So I could put a 7 by 12 calculator in the box and put another one alongside it. And then I could put in two more. See how that works? So at the bottom of my box, if you can imagine, I could lay down four calculators. There's one, there's one. Now you're not gonna see all the parts of all the calculators because it's three-dimensional and the sides of the box are uh, in the way. So, that's one layer of calculators, so that's four calculators right there, okay? Now the calculators are a centimeter tall, okay? One centimeter, that's important to know. And our box is five centimeters tall. So that means I could stack five layers of calculators because each calculator is a fifth of the height of the box, okay? So how many calculators could I fit in this box? Well, if I could do uh, a layer of four calculators to cover up the surface area of that bottom, 
then I could create five layers of calculators. So I have four calculators per layer, right? And there are five layers possible. Are you starting to see the answer? Okay. So, solve this problem. Show or explain how you solve the problem. Okay, so I'm doing everything except providing the answer here. Okay, so if I have five layers possible, Right? I would have five layers of calculators that would fit in the box. There are my five layers. And then each layer is going to have four calculators per layer. Okay? You're probably screaming on the inside saying, I know the answer! Just say it! But I'm not because I bet you could put it together. You're going to use multiplication to come up with the answer. Now, here's the tricky part. How does this answer make sense? Explain it. So what did I do just here? Well, I created some diagrams. I do some, did some drawings. I took some measurements, and I kind of plotted out how many layers of calculators I could fit in the box. Okay? so. Describe in words what I just showed you digitally with my stylus here, right? Okay. Lastly, down at the bottom, we have some multiplication problems. And wait, they're multi-digit. Two-digit multiplication. It says, sketch a rectangle or use partial products to solve. We haven't gotten them partial products yet. We just learned partitioning rectangles. But since I do know how to use partitioning rectangles... Let's use them. I'm going to do number five. Forty-three times three. Forty-three times three. So 43 is four tens and three ones. So I'm going to multiply the 40 times three, which is four tens, or four with a zero behind it. Three times four is 12, of course. And three times four tens will give me 12 tens, otherwise known as 120. And of course, 3 times 3 is 9. So when I take my two products, what do you know? I do know something about partial products. And I add them together, I get an answer of 129. Okay? Are you sure? Are you sure that's right? Well, multiplication is just part, uh, is just repeated addition. So if I multiply 43 times 3, that's the same as saying I'm just adding 43 to itself three times. Okay? 3 plus 3 plus 3, that's 9. 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's 12. 129. See what I did just there? I broke down the 1s, and then I broke down the 10s, and I added them together just like I did over here with my partitioned rectangles. I'm just taking a larger problem, breaking it down into little parts, and then solving. So 129 is our answer. If you have questions about uh, the story problem, using multiplication, partitioning rectangles, please ask your math teacher. They will be happy to help you. Otherwise, we'll talk again soon, friends. Thanks.